pray. Thank God. Amen. Amen. It's so good to be before you on today, um, third Sunday, which happens to be Father's Day, which happens to be Juneteenth Day, and which happens to be Freedom Day, and which happens to be the day that the Lord has made. Amen. 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 Every Sunday, no matter if it was Father's Day or whatever it would be, we would be here together worshiping our Father, worshiping God in spirit and in truth. So I thank God for each and every one of you. Um, I thank God for uh, all of you. Certainly thank God to our mother, uh, our sister um, Karen Jones, hosting a wonderful event yesterday, our sister, Minister Karen Jones. And just celebrating her life, um, certainly thank God for our MC on today, our Elder Tony Bowers and Elder Wheatley. God bless each and every one of you. As I was preparing for today, I uh, just as reflecting and at work, there was this young lady who lost her father recently and um, her car was in the tow lot. And when you keep your car in the tow lot for a certain long period of time, they ended up junking the car. Mm. And she had some special things from her father in her car. Mm. And her car stayed there so long that they're gonna junk the car. And they did junk the car. And we called and we pleaded for them to go and look because she emptied out the car. She said, oh, yeah, James, I got everything. We're good. You can take. But then she said, there's one more thing I forgot. It's from my dad. He just passed away. It's just just don't want it to get junk. But thank God they got her memorabilia out yeah. of the vehicle yeah. before it was junk. And she yeah. called me and I know she's a. Well, I assume, and I can confidently say she's a Christian because she worked at a Christian, Christian bookstore for a time. And um, uh, she called me and she just was saying how everything was going wrong and God just wanted me to encourage her. And that's what I did. I encouraged her and just said, stay encouraged. We're praying for you. We're here for you. And it just brought... Uh, I believe, uh, joy in her situation in terms of what she was dealing with. And uh, I thought also about another client that lost their father during the pandemic. You build relationships with these individuals and you come full circle and now I'm handing checks to people who are in significant car accidents in the pandemic. And I handed this one uh, client a check and um, it, it didn't feel as, as good as others because we just started talking about of how much she lost during the pandemic, including her father. So I don't know, I just was thinking about those things um, as I was preparing the sermon and I was running some errands and um, the Lord gave me a word to give you that was inspired by those two clients here. Oh, and. Yeah. Um, inspired by some other things, but we'll see how this goes. But we'll go to 2 Samuel chap uh, chapter 6, verses 1 through 15. 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 1 through 16. Say amen when you're there. 2 Samuel chapter 6, verses 1 through 15. Certainly thank God for Lauren. Fields Bowers, my wife, who's logged on today at home with Karis and Chloe Fields Bowers, and they're having a great time. Karis got to spend time with her cousins yesterday, and Chloe has gotten to spend time to eat, poop, and sleep. So, um, it's a, yes, it's a, it's the life to live. So, um, Certainly thanking God for them. Thank you, Lord, for all that you do. Say amen if you are in 2 Samuel chapters 6, verse 1 through 15. Amen. amen. 
All right. If you could share it on the screen, that would be great. If not, you all know how to get there. But I want to make sure that we're there because we want to read it together. And it says this. David again gathered all the chosen men of Israel, 30,000, and David arose and went with all the people who were with him from Bella Judah to bring up from there the ark of God, which is called by the name of the Lord of hosts, who sits enthroned on the cherubim. And they carried the ark of God on the new cart and brought it out of the house of Abinadab, which was on the hill of Uzzah, uh, excuse me, which was on the hill. And Uzzah and Ahio, the sons of Abinadab, were driving the new cart, which the ark of God and Ahio went before the ark. So we got the ark of the covenant here. That's where the power of God, that's where God dwelled. And there were individuals, the sons of Abinadab and uh, Isaiah and, and Ohio were going before the ark and um, the sons of Benadab was grabbing the ark. Um, and it was on a cart uh, being pulled with oxen, all right? Uzzah wasn't touching the ark, Ohio wasn't touching the ark, but let's keep reading here. And it says in verse five, and David and all the house of Israel were celebrating before the Lord with songs, lyres and harps, and tambourines, and castanets, and cymbals. In other words, they were dancing before the Lord. Amen. And when they came to the threshing floor of Nikon, Uzzah, Uzzah was, I would say, a, a holy man, a man who was obedient, a church-going man. He wasn't the preacher. He wasn't the pastor. He wasn't the bishop. But let's just call him Deacon Uzzah. Right. Deacon Uzzah put out his hand to the ark of God and took hold of it. Why did he do that? Because the ox stumbled. The ox stumbled. That's a whole nother yeah. sermon for another day. But Deacon Uzzah put out his hand to catch the ark of the covenant. Right. Why? Because the ox stumbled. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzzah. Not before the not before the oxen, the anger of the Lord was kindled before Uzzah, Deacon Uzzah, and what did God do? He struck him down because of his error, and he died. Deacon Uzzah died because he caught the ark of the covenant of God. We know that there was very strict rules that no one other than Levites, the priests, certain who were specific to carry the ark could touch the ark. And Uzzah, no matter how holy he was, no matter what his title was, no matter how many times he was with David, he, was a, he could not touch the ark of the covenant. And when he touched it, it angered God and in his error, even though the oxen had an error, mm -hmm. even in his error, he was killed. But he was, he, he died. God struck him down. Mm -hmm. So David, who was dancing, David, who was celebrating, David, who was happy, David, who had the tambourines and the lyres and the harp. Mm -hmm. Here we see David's dancing turned to anger. And David was angry because the Lord had broken out against Uzzah. The Lord done lay my deacon out. Now what am I supposed to do? And they play, and the place is called Perez Uzzah to this day. And David was afraid of the Lord. And, the, uh, and he said, how can the Ark of the Covenant come with me? He said, Uzzah did more for the church, more for the people than I did. How can I even have the Ark? The Lord going to end up laying me out too. So David said, so David was not willing to take the Ark of the Covenant with him to the city of David. He wasn't willing to take the ark home, but David took it aside and he oh, took it to Obed-Edom's house, Obed-Edom the Gittite. And the ark of the Lord remained in the house of Obed-Edom for 90 days, three months. And 
the Lord bless Obed Edom and the whole house. So here we see David celebrating with the ark. And then we see David uh, seeing his deacon go down because he, the deacon was trying to help recover the ark. And then David said, well, if he ain't good enough to touch it, then I ain't good enough to have it. And David puts the Ark of the Covenant into Obed-Edom's house for 90 days, for three months. Well, when the Ark was in Obed-Edom's house, he didn't want it in his house. He didn't want it in the city of David. David didn't want it in the city of David because he was angry. But while the Ark was in Obed-Edom's house, because God is God and he changes not and he is holy, and he is wonderful, and yeah. he is magnificent, and he is our provider. Guess what happened in Obed, Obed Edom's house? And it was told to King David yeah. since he left the ark there. The Lord has blessed the house of Obed Edom Amen. and all the belongings because of the ark of God. So David went and brought up the ark of God from Obed Edom's house. So here we see King David sitting there saying, Lord, I don't want nothing to you to do with you, like you had me dancing, we were celebrating, and then all of a sudden you strike down one of my lead deacons. I don't want your ark in my house. Yeah. And on, David man. said, don't bring the ark to the city of David, put it in that man Obed-Edom's house. And then when the ark is in Obed-Edom's house, Obed-Edom is blessed. Mm -hmm. And when and David hears of Obed-Edom's blessing, David said, maybe I did something wrong. Maybe, maybe I can make, I might not be good enough, but God still loves me. And David says, bring that ark back over here. David says, so David went and brought the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom to the city of David with rejoicing. And when those who bore the ark of the Lord had gone six steps, Guess what? David said, I had to do something different. He said, I'm going to sacrifice an ox. I'm going to sacrifice a bad animal. And David danced. Look, we went from dancing to celebrating to dancing to God striking one of David's men down to God being angry, David being angry, David feeling inadequate, David feeling in sufficient to the blessing of the Lord to David now doing what? Correcting action and then yeah, experiencing like dancing, <laughs> celebration. And David danced before the Lord with all of his might. Yeah. His might is from God. So David danced before the Lord with God. And David was wearing a linen ephod. We talked about that in Bible study, so we won't dwell on it. But David had his clothes on, and David and all the house of Israel brought up uh, the Ark of the Covenant with shouting and with sounds of horns. They brought the Ark of the Covenant back to David's house. They brought the Ark of the Covenant back to the city of David. David is now found rejoicing with the focus scripture of, and David dance before the Lord with all his might. Come on. If Luther Vandroff was here, he would say, dance with my father. Yeah. David, dance with his father. All right. If you could, if we could use for a thought today, dance with my father. Hey. Some people say, you know, she wants a Marvin Gaye, some Luther Vandrop, a little Alina will set this party all right. They say that to say, you know what? That's the music that we love to hear. That's the music that will set the tone of how we're feeling. But here we see David saying, I need to do something that will set the tone back to my father, yeah. set the tone back to the right. relationship that I have with my father. And what was that that David did? In, in, chap, in, in verse 14, it says, and David danced yeah. before the father, uh, before the Lord with all his might. So let's use for a thought today, dance with my father. Here we see it. Uh, 2 Samuel 
Chapter six, the word dance, kawar. It means to dance before the Lord. It's the only time that this Hebrew word is used in the entire Bible. Well, we know that this isn't the only time dance is used in the Bible. We can even jump to say that he's turned my mourning into dancing, my sorrow into joy, right? But that dancing is literally the word, the Hebrew word cool, K H. Uh, this is how it's phonetically spelled. I didn't spell how it is in Hebrew, but it's phonetically cool to actually dance. to work to encourage you that maybe once you were celebrating and then you became angry with God, I want you to get back dancing. Why dance? We dance because it connects the physical to the spiritual. Yeah. What's on the inside of you come on the outside of you. That's dancing. We see that with uh, 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 Juneteenth and Freedom Day. We see that with the slaves and what they would call the plantation shout or the ring shout, where they would say hymns or Negro spirituals and dance. Lord. Sometimes there would be uh, silent parties where they would not say a word lest anyone should wake up, but they would dance to, to acknowledge the spiritual being and the physical being being knit together because we know that in their situation the physical had to happen eventually we know that when the sun went down the moon in the words of the slaves did shine because oh, yeah. when the moon came up it was their morning time where they could go and follow the north star follow the track to the north. So yes. in, 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 in their situation, they could not always use words or could not always sing the hymn, but guess what they could do is dance. They had children. So when you think about them getting beat or whipped, you think about their inabilities or deficiencies in dance because the master or the slave owners wanted them to stay there. They didn't want them to move, but God in their spirit gave their physical being might, in, in, to use the words of the word of God today in, in, in verse 14, and David danced before the Lord with all his might. So the slaves here danced with all their might so that at nighttime, guess what? They could run. They could follow the drinking guard. They could follow the North Star and be on their way to the North. So why do we dance? Because it connects your physical to your spiritual. And if you take the words of Luther Vandroff, why do we dance? Especially with our father, then you know that you're loved. That's right. Dancing shows that you're loved. It connects a per one person spiritual and physical with another one spiritual and physical and it shows the love of the father we oftentimes see at weddings in america or even in uh, uh, weddings uh, african weddings a time for dancing mm -hmm. there's a time for the bride and groom to dance there's a time for the mother and the son to dance mm -hmm. and then there's a time for the daughter and the father to dance mm -hmm. to use the words of luther banjo if i could only dance with my father again then i will know yes. that i am loved yes yeah but let's use the example of king david I say king with emphasis because he was King David at this time. Yeah. And we see King David, we want to talk about, well, what stopped King David from dancing? What's stopping you from dancing right now? The short hey. answer is maybe you're angry with God. Uh-oh. 
<laughs> you calling me angry God? I ain't angry with God. Would you? I'm, I've been showing up to church every day. I know this happened to me in life, but I've been here. I've been, guess what? David showed up to church too. He just said, go, go ahead and put God in Obed-Edom's house. I, don't, I can't deal with this no more. Some of us are in a position where we are kings. We are royalty. We are his chosen people. But what we're saying is, God, I can't deal with you being present in my life anymore. I'm just trying to see why did the church stop dancing? Why did we stop dancing? We know that it connects the spiritual to the physical. We know that when we dance with our Father, we dance before the Lord. We know that it's the time where God says, you are love, you are mine. But somewhere along the way, something happened in our life. Maybe we lost our father. Maybe we lost our children. Maybe we lost our job. Maybe everything we thought would be is not. Maybe life just isn't what I planned it to be, but it's everything that God planned it to be. Maybe my plan isn't the way of the Lord. Maybe his ways are higher than my ways. And his thoughts are higher than my thoughts. And maybe I just don't want the presence of God anymore. Go ahead and put it in uh, Obed-Edom's house. King David. It's so interesting because Jesus is called the son of David. Jesus, remember when David said, Lord, I'm going to build you a house. We'll see that next year. Lord, I'll build you a house. God said, no, you don't build me a house. But guess what? I'm going to build you a house. You see, David was in a position of receiving constant blessing from God. We are in a position of receiving constant blessing from God. The Holy Spirit constantly dwells and ministers with us. But somewhere along the way, life has happened where our deacon Uzzah has died. Not because of something the Ammonites have done, not because of something the enemy has done, not because of something the stranger has done, but because my God has put me in this position. And now I'm without deacon Uzzah. Why? Because he touched the ark. Natural occurrences with natural disasters with spiritual disasters, okay? Natural occurrences with spiritual disasters. Yeah, so somewhere along the life in this fallen world, one they call sin nature or the world that we lived in, born in sin is shaped in iniquity. Yeah. We have to pass through this thing called death. We have to say earth to earth. And, 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 uh, ashes. ashes to ashes, earth to earth, dirt to yeah. dust to dust. We have to have a confrontation with death on the physical level, but we don't have to have confrontation with death on the spiritual level. Right. Somebody hear me what I'm saying today, that even in our natural occurrence where our deacon is a may die, we now find ourselves angry with God. Why? Why did we stop dancing? Because we're angry. God knows best. Yes, he does. We have to trust his plan. Mm -hmm. The songwriter said, if you can't trace his hand, <laughs> then trust his heart. Am I, am I right? Oh, trace his hand, yeah. trust his heart. Yeah. He'll never leave you. He'll never leave you alone. In these precious moments where we're trying to put all the pieces together, we have to know that God is still in control. My Lord. We said, I don't know why he ain't listening to me. I've been praying for 20 years. Guess what? God is just trying to say, have you thought about my servant James and how he never left me and now he always stayed faithful, how he always stayed. We cannot be angry with God. Matter of fact, we have to dance with him all the more. All right, come on. The second thing is, why do we stop dancing? Because people despise us. Right. When we keep reading, we see that David's, one of David's wives, Micah, despised him. David danced so hard that his wife, those scripture in verse 16 says, David was leaping and dancing before the Lord. And she despised him in her heart. You got to know that when things don't go your way, but you still trust God, 
The devil going to call you crazy. And guess who else going to call you crazy? Everybody else around you. You got to trust God and lean not on your own understanding, but lean on God. Amen. Don't get angry. And if you get angry quickly, begin to celebrate the goodness of God. Quickly begin to celebrate the blessings of God. The second thing is, uh, 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 why do we stop dancing? Simply because we have no joy. We find ourselves depressed because we don't have a spiritual connection, a physical connection with our father. Dancing brings out joy. You can see somebody else dancing in the church and catching the Holy Spirit, as, as some call it. And guess what? Somebody else will start breaking out dancing. One of that, some of that is because the Holy Spirit is not a respecter of person. But some of that is, hey, I want the joy that she had. Yeah. You see with David, he, yeah. he tried it. He said, okay, Lord, you can bless everybody but me. But guess what? David sat around for 90 days and he said, guess what? This ain't a good plan. I want what Obed Edom has. I know I've been sitting here depressed about you knocking my deacon out, deacon us for uh, error. You didn't knock the oxen out, but you knocked my deacon out. And now I'm mad at the whole world, including God. But David came to his senses. He said after 90 days, guess what? I need to stick with God. I need to trust God. I need to change what I'm doing. You see, God allows natural events to uh, 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 allow spiritual growth. But on the other side, the natural events can cause spiritual disaster. Okay, so one thing that we have to learn from David is in his anger, he took time to himself. We can judge him for giving the Ark of the Covenant to Obed-Edom, but maybe David needs to see somebody else get blessed. Maybe you needed to see that in your misery, God is still healing. Even in your misery, God is still providing joy. Even in your misery, God is still providing financial breakthrough. Because guess what? Just because he didn't do it for me and he did it for somebody else, guess what? That means he could do it for me. Yeah. That means if I course correct, correct, then God's blessing will come back on my life. Here we see David take time to himself. Sometimes oh, we need Lord. to take time to ourselves. We're trying to figure out why we ain't dancing. Well, let's figure it out. Let's take 90 days and say, what stopped me from dancing? Did I get angry? Did I cuss this person out? Did I not pay this bill or pay this bill and thought that God stop providing. Where did I go wrong that I said, God, you can bless everyone but me? Where did I go wrong when I can log on and listen to testimony after testimony after testimony after testimony and say that God is blessed, but he's blessing everybody but me? Let's take time to think about it. Matter of fact, let's take 90 days. And when you take 90 days, I believe that God's word is true. Yeah. That in the 90 days, the uh, uh, in verse 12, it says, they told King David that the Lord has blessed the house of Obed-Edom, all that belongs to him because of the ark of God. Not because you was angry, David. Not because you was depressed, David. Not because you were despised, David. Not because you were worn out back down and in a corner and having a pity party, David. But God bless him. Uh, God bless Obed-Edom because of the ark of God. Hallelujah. But Glory David God. came to himself, saints. David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom. I'm here to encourage you to go back and get God. Go back and dance with your father. You had a good dance. You had a dance where in your youth, when you were innocent, when you first got saved, you and God were dancing. You and God were having a time. Y'all were having a good old time where he was blessing and blessing and you was praising and pressing and, and praising. And then somewhere along the way, You got angry, you got despised, you got embarrassed, you got depressed, you got in a position where you gave up on God, saying that he cares about everybody but you. And I'm here to encourage you and say that no, 
He has not. God has not forgotten about you. You need to get in a position where you can dance with your father again. And guess what? That's exactly what David did. David said, why am I not dancing? It's because of my anger. It's because I'm being despised. It's because I'm embarrassed. It's because I experienced depression. And, and, and limitations was interesting. We always quote the verse of mourning into dancing, but I'm here to tell you that the word of God also says this in Lamentations chapter 15, verse in, in Lamentations chapter 5, verse 15. It says, The joy of our hearts has ceased. Our dancing has been turned to mourning. This is, this is, this is when, when, when the anger comes in, when the depression comes in, when the, when the uh, financial instability comes in, when the marriage uh, begins to be questioned. But the word, I'm reading from the word here in Lamentations chapter 5, verse 15, it says, the joy of our hearts has ceased. Our dancing has been turned to mourning. All right? So, I wish I could tell you that this road is going to be no, no bumpy road. You won't have to go through nothing, but guess what? You're going to have to go through a lot. There's going to be a time where you say, Lord, where has my joy gone? And you have to check Obed Edom's house. You got to say, Lord, give me the joy that pastor has. Give me the joy that Avengers Adams have. Give me the joy that I hear about every day because you Touch me way back when you touch me and you changed my life forever. Limitation says the joy of the heart has ceased. And dancing has been turned to mourning. Jesus, hallelujah. Somebody say thank God for songs. Thank God for Sing, songs. Th thank God for songs. Thank yeah. God for Psalms 30. Psalm because 30. even when your joy becomes mourning. David, David said, if I can't, uh, David, uh, the Psalm of David, a song at the dedication of the temple. And it's entitled, The Joy Comes in the Morning. Mm -hmm. Psalm 30, verse 11, in complete contrast to that which is prophesied in Lamentations by Jeremiah, it says, you have turned for me. My morning into what? Dancing. Hallelujah. You have loosed my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness that my glory may sing your praise and not be silent. For the Lord my God, I will thank you forever. God has in even when we experience our joy going away, even when we experience a day of darkness or a day where we feel like giving up, God is a God that will change your morning into dancing. So how do I get back dancing? How did David get back dancing? He course corrected. He said every six steps. Every six steps, I'm going to sacrifice and give God praise. So every time the ark, David said, yeah, the ark of the covenant, the presence of God can come with me. But guess what? I got to change how I move. You see, it wasn't David Corcoran. He said, it wasn't God's fault for knocking down Deacon Uzzah. It wasn't anybody else's fault. It wasn't even the oxen's fault. But it just was teaching me that I got to grow in my anointing. I have to grow in my relationship with Jesus. I got to grow with my relationship with God in the relationship with the Ark of the Covenant. So much so that how I used to walk with God, I can't walk anymore. How I used to pray to God, I got to pray a little while longer. I got to pray a little bit more. I got to every six steps, I got to offer an oxen. I got to often offer a fat uh, uh, animal. I just want to encourage you that you are a living sacrifice, that God is working in you, and that this is our reasonable service to offer ourselves up as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God, that you have to course correct. What is your every six step? We talk about the 12 step plan. I'm talking about the six step plan. What are you going to do different today so that you can experience 
the manifestation of the Holy Spirit in your life right now. That when God's glory comes down, whether it be natural, you say thank you. Whether it be spiritual, you say thank you. Whether it be emotional, you say thank you. For God, I live. For God, I die. How will we get back dancing, church? We look at David. He was angry. But then he brought the presence back in. He said, every step, step I'm going to praise my God. My, my, my. Oh, my. What is your every six steps? Ooh, stop God. caring what other people think and humble yourself before God. Oh, you got to stop caring what your spouse thinks. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, Jesus. Yeah. That's, the, that's the plain text here. David's spouse called him crazy. Yeah. Yeah. He still yeah. had to praise God. God dealt with her. God dealt with David. What God did said, hey, Micah, you're never going to have children again because of how you looked at David and his relationship with me. Right. Don't let nobody stop you from getting closer with your God. Stop caring what other people think. Other people might be the church. Other people might be your spouse. Other people might be your friend, your neighbor. Right. I don't care. But stop caring what other people think and humble yourself before God. That's how we get back dancing. Because what's the consequences of dancing with your father? The consequences, as we learn with Obed Edom, as we close, is blessings on blessings on blessings. Oh, because oh, one day you were dancing with God, and the other day you felt so far along. I'm here to tell you that there's going to come a day that you don't want to sound like Luther Vandross. You don't want to say, if I could only. You want to dance right now. Because... Dance why is day because I'm here to tell you that the night does come. The consequences of dancing with your father is when night comes, you're still blessed. When morning comes, you're still blessed. Just like Juneteenth, when morning was there, they was blessed. When night came, it just led them to freedom, and they were still blessed. And it gives you just a subtle confidence that everything's going to be okay. When you walk with God and you trust his word, guess what? The storms may be that may get heavy and the winds may blow, but Hallelujah. God gives you peace that surpasses all understanding. He gives you the peace in the hands of Nehemiah that says, hey, this temple ain't been built for years, decades, but he'll strengthen your hands even the more to build the temple in, in days. Blessings, subtle confidence comes when you dance with your father. When you... Uh, 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 what I wrote down does not make sense. When mm -hmm. down your father's love, you will lift. Uh, when you dance with your father, his love will lift you up. Yeah, and sure. uh, you will have to know that your father cares about you. Right. He will never say it. He might not ever uh, say it. Or But when you dance, mm -hmm. it's unmistakable that God loves you. Mm -hmm. When you see somebody dancing in the church with the Holy Spirit, guess what? They tell you, man, they know that they know that they know God the is real. Something that nobody, you see the storm, they were, but what you experience with God is why you know that God is real. God's love is made manifest with our dance with our Father. God said, uh, God said, God, his word says, I commended my love toward you, that even while you were yet sinners, Christ died for you. So really what he's saying is when nothing else could help, All right. love lifted me. God is love. And I need to dance with my father. I need to bask in his glory. Swan so said, I can only imagine how it is to dance with my father. But guess what? You can dance with your father today because I'm here to tell you that there's a storm out over the ocean and it's moving this way. And if your soul is not anchored in the love of Jesus, if you cannot depend on the love of Jesus lifting you up when nothing else could help, if you cannot depend on the love of Jesus, Touching your finances when nothing else could help. When you, if you cannot depend on the love of Jesus, you will surely drift away. So if you don't know how to dance, they taught us early on 
fun when we were young. They said, put your left foot in and put your right foot in and shake it all about and do the hokey pokey and turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. I'm trying to tell you today, you don't have to have the best dance. You don't have to have the best dance award, the joyful dance award, but you got to have a dance. I'm not here to tell you that you have to get your steps right together, but I am here to tell you to put your left foot in. I'm here to tell you to put your right foot in. Lean not on your own understanding. Trust God with your whole heart. Even though all these things happen, I know the plans I have declared for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope in the future. Future. I know that in all things, that God, that all things will work together for them who love God and who are called according to his purpose. I'm here to tell you that nothing can separate you from the love of God. If it be death, if it be fear, if it be body, nothing. I am convinced that neither height nor death can separate us from the love of God. So get your dance on, because guess what? There's a day where you will be walking and the one to the left will be gone and the one to the right will be standing. There's gonna come a day where we'll all be sleeping and one land to your right will be gone and the one land to your left will be still standing. And God in the twinkling of an eye will come and rapture his church. And that death that we have to experience, we won't have to experience no more. That struggle we had to experience, we won't have to experience no more. Somebody said, I see freedom. Somebody said it's Freedom Day. Not because of what I did, but because of the Ark of the Covenant. Not because of something I said, but because of the presence of God. Not because of something I preach, but because of the presence of God. I know that eyes have not seen, nor that ears have heard. Lord has an engine to the heart of man, but through the Spirit of God, he will pour out his flesh, pour out his spirit on all flesh in the mighty name of Jesus. So in your turmoil, in your in your sickness, in your life tragedy, you gotta know that you need to dance with your father. I almost wrote down if I could only dance with my father. But then I looked at the title of Luther Vandross song. It didn't say, if I could only dance. Luther, Luther had enough sense to say, the title of this song is going to be Dance With My Father. Dance. If Luther dance. had enough sense to just say, yes. just dance, yes. guess what we got to do? Yes. Just dance. Yes, dance. Somebody, what do y'all know? What do y'all know the song? I don't know, but somebody said, you just make me feel like dancing. Yes. Yep. You make me feel like dancing. But then he said something. He said, I got to dance the night away. Some of y'all got to dance the night away. Some of y'all got to dance the depression out your life. Some of y'all got to dance the despicableness out your life. Some of y'all got to dance the financial struggles out your life. Somebody got to dance the sickness out of your life. Somebody got to dance the bondage out your life. You make me feel like dancing. You got to dance the night away. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, I believe that God is giving you a dance in your spirit. That God will carry you in every season, amen? God is going to carry you in Jesus' name. Jesus said that I did not come to condemn the world, but that the world through me might be saved. He said, if you do not know me, you are condemned already. He said, if you don't believe in me, you are condemned already. And he said, why shall I condemn my own? So if you never dance with your father, if you don't know what it's like to be loved, if you don't know what it's like to feel love without somebody else ever saying it, you can feel the love of God today. You can call on Jesus where you're at right now. Right now. You don't have to be here in the sanctuary with me. You don't have to be somewhere where there's oil or even you don't have to even bring a token. God is saying, guess what? You so worried about my house, I'm worried about your house. Yeah. He's saying, you so worried about what I'm doing, I'm worried about where you're going. And you can call on Jesus right now and he will be with you. Just lift your hands and say, Jesus, come into my heart. 
Make me new. Make me whole. I need you. I need you, Jesus. I'm totally dependent on your death and your resurrection. Lord, I'm dependent on you. I'm dependent on your power. I'm dependent on your presence. And God will come into your life. That's how simple it is. So that you can dance when everybody else despises you. Guess what? God is looking at you and saying, I love you. You might not ever hear it come. You might not ever think you hear the voice of the Lord. But guess what? You will feel his touch. You will feel him on the inside of you and he will walk with you. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. So don't get weary in your bed. Well, do it. Don't get mad just because God's plan is not your plan that he that left you without Deacon Uzza. Deacon Uzza is doing great. He got preached to and he's doing good. We're going to see him on the other side. Who you lost is doing good. They are doing great. We're going to see him on the other side. But guess what? We have to finish our race. That's right. <clears throat> because yeah. what God has called us to do is, is why we're still here right now. So when you feel like giving up, just dance. Just dance. Just dance. Just dance.